How to work with Chinese manufacturers. Starting an e-commerce business means trying to obtain things cheaply. You'll likely browse Alibaba and Made in China for Chinese vendors. I had to do this when I launched my internet business and sourced cheap things for Amazon, eBay, and my online store. I was worried about more than money. It was also my first time working with Chinese partners, a country I knew little about save that they are good at manufacturing, win a lot of medals at the Olympics, and have great food. 1. Culture, it affects business, 2. When doing business with foreigners, there are several cultural differences. When interacting with Asian business partners, you must respect their traditions. What's acceptable in the US may not be in the Far East, where cultures are very different. It's natural to conduct a lot of study on how to put up a successful online store, acquire your products, and turn them into profit, but it's easy to forget about your possible trade partners and how cultural differences may affect your business. I did that, making many embarrassing and infuriating mistakes that caused headaches and restless nights. In my experience, generating a good initial impression will make dealing with the supplier easier and may even result in better product pricing than the provider's website. 2. Email-only dangers. I noticed that certain Amazon sellers may directly contact suppliers when I started selling. Take as much time as possible to do this. Emails are impersonal and can misinterpret or even be unpleasant. A wall of text makes it hard to read someone's tone. From initial contact to design, I've found that email-only relationships are stressful. Your product's minor flaws will require frequent communication with them. 3. Communicate personally. If you think your contact can talk with you, Skype them and get to know them. In their culture, it's friendlier and simpler to communicate. I like talking to them as much as they seem to like talking to me, and this eliminates any complications that could arise from emailing. Chinese people usually befriend before doing business. Relationship building is vital to the Chinese because they are good at detecting ulterior motives and unethical people. I've heard other sellers find this frustrating. The relationship building process will impede your timeline, but Chinese trust is all on honesty and reliability. To trust you, people must know you. They must be comfortable to do business. 4. Yes, isn't necessarily yes. Talking is very important early in a relationship. Email can only describe the thing you want the provider to manufacture if they've never done it before. To avoid shame, they'll say yes. This is simply to save face and may lead to them quitting the professional relationship by utilizing non-committal language in future discussions. Yes, but. It usually means, no, so find another way or source. Many vendors said okay but never responded or gave me the runaround, so I had to leave. 5. Remember that you manage a business. Don't let relationship building charm you into accepting business terms you wouldn't normally accept. Chinese negotiators take advantage of this. They also use psychological tactics like becoming silent during a Skype session to make you feel like the conditions aren't good enough, forcing you to provide them better terms. A friendly, but firm, attitude should get you what you want and gain you recognition as a powerful business person. 6. Avoid middlemen. Finally, calling ensures you're dealing with the supplier or manufacturer. You may use a middleman to communicate with the source. Dealing with a middleman will make problem solving and communicating with real suppliers difficult. This hurts your earnings since they have to hire someone to handle you. 7. Stay calm. China saves face differently than the West. It's like avoiding disgrace and ridicule. China's concept goes deeper. It is involved in most situations that could give them trouble. For instance, losing your cool will likely ruin your relationship. You'll appear more businesslike than the West by being calm in difficult situations. 8. Respect titles. Social status is crucial in China and most Asian nations. Once a few interactions or once someone gives us their first name, Westerners generally remove titles. Chinese culture values titles and positions. Most contacts should be addressed by title and surname. Disrespecting them could damage the connection. Instead of titles, use Mr., Mrs., Sir, and Madam. 9. Take personal questions lightly. Some of my partner's initial contact and future needs queries astonished me. They routinely ask my age, marital status, and income. I wouldn't ask these intimate questions in Western business. Asian countries ask these questions to understand you and your social status. 
If you don't feel comfortable answering them, try to be as non-descriptive as possible or even lie, but attempt to give a qualitative answer. 10. Build relationships. After building good relationships with my Chinese suppliers, I was able to negotiate lower costs, longer payment terms, shipping accident coverage, and more. Being patient, understanding their business culture, and befriending my suppliers has made my Amazon selling life more joyful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe our YouTube channel. See you soon.